You're watching Tag TV. Welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan's efforts to unleash chaos in Jammu and Kashmir. Terrorist attack claims life of retired SSP during call to Azan. And LED terrorist Hafi Said's party to contest all seats in upcoming Pakistan's elections. For years, Jammu and Kashmir has striven to create an environment of harmony, unity and progress. However, Pakistan, in its bid to assert control and stoke unrest, has embarked on a destructive path of violence and chaos. The use of terrorism as a tool to achieve political objectives has been a recurring theme in Pakistan's approach, particularly concerning the Kashmir issue. A glaring example of Pakistan's intent to disrupt peace emerged on a fateful day, December 22, when a major terrorist attack resulted in the tragic loss of four Indian Army soldiers in the Poonj district of South Kashmir. Let's delve into the details in our report. Rattled by a peaceful and progressive environment in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan is trying every trick in the book to unleash violence and chaos in the region. On December 22nd, a group of heavily armed terrorists ambushed Indian Army vehicles in Jammu and Kashmir's Poonch district. The ambush was not a routine hit-and-run terrorist attack but it appears to have been meticulously planned and executed. The terrorists chose a sharp bend on the road where vehicles slowed down. Once the two vehicles were in their range, the terrorists fired indiscriminately from dense forests, following which four soldiers identified as Birendra Singh, Karan Kumar, Chandan Kumar and Gautam Kumar were reportedly killed. The People Anti-Fascist Front, an offshoot of Pakistan-based Jaisi Mohammed Terra outfit, took responsibility for the attack on social websites. Thana Mandi naam ka ek gaon hai aur rajori sector mein aur wahan par ek dhatiyar mod hai dera ki gali ke paas. To wahan par us mod par bahut pathila rasta hai to naturally gaadiya jab guzarti hai wahan se to unki speed kam ho jati hai. Speed jab kam hoti hai to wo ekdam sahi mauka hota hai kisi bhi sena ko ya kisi bhi atankwadi ko hamla karne ka jab gaadiyo ki speed kam hoti hai. Aur naturally pathila rasta hone ke karan hamari jo fauji gaadiya ja rahi thi unki speed kam ho gai. ऐसे हो सकता है कि आतंकवादी ने पहले ही उस इलाके का रेकी की होगी और फिर उन्होंने ये जो दत्यार मोड है ये उन्होंने मोड चुना होगा क्योंकि वहां पर आम तौर पर एक पहाड़ी है जिस पहाड़ी के चोटी के ऊपर आतंकवादी छुपे थे और पथरीला रास्ता होने के कारण स्पीड कम होने के कारण तुरंत वहां पर एक्शन करना यह बहुत आसान हो जाता है तो वहां पर हमारी सेना की गाड़ियों के ऊपर एम्बुश हुआ है हमला हुआ है और उसके जवाबी कार्रवाई में हमारे चार जवान इन्हें वीरगति प्राप्त हुई है लेकिन इसके लिए तुरंत उस एरिया को कॉर्डन ऑफ किया गया है और आतंकवादियों को अभी जो कार्रवाई शुरू है वो कार्रवाई अभी जारी रहेगी जब तक आतंकवादी मिल नहीं जाते Jammu and Kashmir police suspect that Rajouri and Poonch districts are primary targets for Pakistan and its affiliated terror groups, aligning with Islamabad's agenda to reignite terrorism in the region. Rajouri and Poonch districts spread over 4,304 square kilometers and are located south of Pir Panjal mountain range in Jammu and Kashmir. The region is dotted with dense forests, snow-capped mountains and countless caves. 
On one side to Rajouri and Poonch is the line of control that divides Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan occupied Kashmir. On the other side lies the erstwhile terrorist hotbed of South Kashmir. The geography and the topography of the region have helped terrorists to carry out some of the deadliest attacks in recent history in Jammu and Kashmir. The recent attack was the seventh strike on the army since October 2021 in Rajouri and Poonch. A total of 34 army personnel have lost their lives. Seven Hindu civilians were also killed in January 2023. It is evident that Pakistan has shifted its tactics, dispatching highly trained and well-equipped terrorists to execute guerrilla-style attacks on security convoys, camps, and patrols, rather than deploying them in the Kashmir Valley to target civilians and minorities. Pakistan is hell-bent upon sending terrorists over here in the. state of jammu and kashmir and this has been verified by our intelligence sources also that there are nearly around 300 uh, terrorist in the launch pads around the international border and the pakistan occupied uh, uh, line of control pakistan has time and again been told and cautioned not to do this but it is bent upon doing this and it is not going to stop because it has to divert the attention of its own people from the internal problem that they are having where they are having no food they are having no water they they are having no petroleum products they have their economy is totally in doldrums and to divert that attention it will keep doing this india has to take strict actions against this pakistan's actions expose it as a state that supports terrorism and aims to instill fear among the people of kashmir nevertheless these heinous acts will not derail jammu and kashmir's path towards development as in insecurity forces remain resolute in countering these sinister plots the people of the region stand united against these forces of darkness with an unwavering determination to overcome the challenges that threaten the peace and prosperity of our beloved land in pakistan Mumbai terror attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed's party is going to contest the upcoming elections. Saeed backed Pakistan Merkazi Muslim League has reportedly fielded candidates for each and every national and provincial assembly constituency of Pakistan. Notably, Hafiz Saeed's son Tala Saeed is also in the run and will contest the polls from a seat in Lahore. Airport Voters across Pakistan will go to the polls next year to elect a new government. But what makes this election unique is that voters will have the choice to choose terror. Terror organization Lashkar-e-Taiba has opened a new political front ahead of the upcoming general elections slated to be held on February 8, 2024. The political entity of the LET Pakistan Merkazi Muslim League has reportedly fielded candidates for every national and provincial assembly constituency across Pakistan. Hafiz Saeed's son Talha Saeed is going to contest the polls from the national assembly constituencies NA1 to 4 in Lahore. The party's central president Khalid Masood is taking part from NA130 against former prime minister Nawaz Sharif. In the 2018 general election, PMML took part as the Milli Muslim League, the political face of the banned Jamaat Dawa. PMML emerged after the Milli Muslim League was banned in the country. The founder of the PMML party and Lashkar-e-Taiba chief Hafiz Saeed has been in jail since July 17, 2019 for several charges. In April 2022, a special anti-terrorism court in Lahore sentenced him to a jail term of 33 years for financing terrorism despite being designated a terrorist by the united nations and european union in the 2000s said was neither charged nor extradited over nearly two decades the permissive environment in pakistan has enabled terrorists like hafiz said 
to acquire political power. In Pakistan, politicians sometimes quote terrorist leaders to turn out voters. It's a very, very interesting happening simply because lashkar e toiba is a banned organization not only by the world and by India but also by Pakistan. lashkar e toiba was responsible for the 26-11 attack and it is still active in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Secondly, its front organization is called Jamaat-e-Ul-Dawa which is also banned. Thirdly, presently the lashkar e toiba chief Hafi Saeed is under jail. But it has been reported now that Hafi Saeed's son is, uh, has formed a different organization and he is going to fight elections. Initially, they formed an organization called Mili Muslim, uh, Mili Muslim League. But the Pakistani, uh, 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 Pakistani Election Commission did not accept it. So therefore, they have formed another organization uh, and, uh, and I think now they have been permitted to fight the elections. In 2018, Terror groups that were refused registration by the Election Commission participated in elections under different names. The leaders of those controversial organizations asserted that their goal was to bring about genuine change, claiming that Pakistani citizens had been let down by mainstream political parties. In the upcoming election also, terrorists will attempt to exploit religion and religious sentiments to further their cause. What we have to understand is a banned organization, its followers, if they take part in elections, how correct it is? Isn't it not an uh, uh, is, isn't it not an insult of democracy? Because any organization which takes part, it has to fight the elections by the democratic way. They should not be involved in the violence. They should not be involved in the terror activities. They should not be banned by the world. They should not be banned inside Pakistan also. But despite all these bans, if they just change the name and are going to fight the election in Pakistan and Pakistan Election Commission is going to permit them to fight an election, it is definitely a defeat for the Pakistani Democratic Party. The terror organizations are not likely to win a large number of votes in Pakistan, but they could have a sizable impact on the outcome. By enabling terrorists to contest elections, Pakistan is openly legitimizing the ideologies that can spawn radicalization. It would be disastrous for Pakistan, where society is already radicalized. India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir posed the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A on August 6, 2019 is on a trajectory of rapid development. However, amid these positive strides, acts of terrorism still persist. Recent attacks on police personnel serve as a stark reminder of the challenges faced. Tragically, a recent incident unfolded in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramulla district, where retired police officer Mohammad Shafi Mir fell victim to a deadly terror attack. We have this special report. On December 24, tragedy struck in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramulla district as retired police officer Mohammad Shafi Mir fell victim to a deadly terrorist attack. While offering Azan prayers at a local mosque, Shafi was mercilessly shot by two terrorists, sending shock waves through his native village. The news prompted an immediate response with additional security personnel intensifying efforts to locate the terrorists through thorough searches in the area. The funeral of Shafi Mir drew a large crowd, revealing the deep sorrow felt by the community. Survived by his wife and two children, one of whom is a teacher, the slain police officer was laid to rest in his ancestral graveyard in Gantmula village. Azam ke wakat, main azam sura tha, main soya tha. 
तो लेकिन आजान सुन रहा था उसके बाद या, या जब उसने अशद अल्लाह अल्ला पढ़ा तो फायर की आवाज़ हो गई मैं समझा क्योंकि हमारी माई खराब थी मैं समझा शायद क्योंकि मैं ही ठीक करता था मैं समझा मत माई खराब हो गई या उसका मत ये कुछ फट गया उसी की आवाज़ आ गई हमने बस सीरियस नहीं लिया उसके बाद मेरी बहू ने खिड़की से क्योंकि हम नमाज पढ़ने के लिए उठ रहे थे मेरी बहू ने कहा कि उधर रोने की आवाज़ आ रही है बेद में हम गए वहाँ पर उधर मेरे भाई ये रोज अजान देता था रोज अजान इतवार के रोज आते हैं ये वापस डिपार्टमेंट में एसएसपी थे मैं उसका छोटा भाई हूँ The retired SSP's killing comes days after a police constable was shot and injured in a targeted attack at Hamdania Colony in Bemina area of Srinagar and less than 2 months after an off-duty Jammu and Kashmir police head constable was killed in a similar attack. This incident echoes a troubling trend of targeted killings in North Kashmir, reminiscent of the violence that plagued the region in 2021. The perpetrators believed to have connections with Pakistan continue to operate within Jammu and Kashmir posing a persistent threat to peace. Every year before the pass is closed closed down there's an increased attempt to infiltrate because they know for the next 4 5 6 months pass will be closed and the infiltration would become extremely difficult and they do not want peace and tranquility to prevail in Jammu and Kashmir. second thing there are about five or six areas which because of topographical reasons because of dense forests high mountains riverine terrain lend lend themselves to easier infiltration these areas are firstly gurez second is tangdhar sector third is the uri sector fourth is the rajouri pun sector fifth is the samba sector and sixth is the gurdaspur sector in very big infiltration is taking place only in these sectors and because these sectors lend themselves to easier infiltration because of availability of places to hide it is for this reason that infiltration takes place from this area the union territory posed the abrogation of article 370 and 35a on august 6 2019 has been on a trajectory of rapid development despite these positive strides acts of terrorism persist as evidenced by recent attacks on police personnel residents in the valley have expressed their disdain for pakistan's sponsored terrorism opting for the path of peace and prosperity meanwhile pakistan remains a destabilizing force allegedly providing financial and logistical support to terrorists in jammu and kashmir in response India asserts its commitment to combating terrorism and holding its sponsors accountable reflecting an ongoing struggle to maintain peace in the region Pakistan has always tried to fuel terrorism in Kashmir several defense experts have exposed the modus operandi of Pak elements time and again Recently, the founder and CEO of the security and foreign policy think tank Usnas Foundation, Abhinav Pandya, wrote a book which explores the intricate workings of jihadi organizations and how money is raised for the purpose of orchestrating attacks in Kashmir. Abhinav, a PhD holder from Jindal School of International Affairs, examined the intricate and multi-layered network of terror funding in the region. We have this report. A whole generation has passed since the partition between India and Pakistan, but Islamabad refuses to end Kashmir's obsession. The role of Pakistan in aiding terrorism in Kashmir is well documented, and now another effort has been made to expose how it finances terror in Kashmir. Abhino Pandya, the founder and CEO of India-based security and foreign policy think tank Usanas Foundation. recently wrote a book on terror financing in valley his book terror financing in kashmir delves into the intricacies of how funds are generated by jihadi organizations and used against india abhinav who has completed his phd on terrorism and counter terrorism in jammu and kashmir 
from Jindal School of International Affairs has analyzed the layered and complex web of terror financing in Kashmir. The book examines the role of multiple actors including formal and non-formal, state and non-state, local and international to delineate the various strands of an intricate financial system. While working in Kashmir as a researcher for about five years, I realized that Pakistan has created a very sophisticated, layered, complex and refined network of terror financing in Kashmir, which was primarily and which continues to be primarily the main reason for the continuation of militancy in Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir for last three decades. Now it's more than three decades. And interestingly, most of our efforts so far were confined to kinetic measures like uh, just doing with the military operations, the counter cordon and search operations and all mostly confined to the military operations. But terror financing modules in Kashmir, they were the main crux, they were the main engine of this uh, whole business of militancy in Kashmir. So I started writing this book and this, is book, this book is the first work which discusses at length how this terror financing network operates in Kashmir and uh, interestingly this is based on a ground re level research and ground level evidence gathering exercise. While discussing the growth and evolution of Pakistan's proxy war in Kashmir, Abhinav talks about the non-state actors who are being used as Islamist warriors in India's neighboring country. Abhinav writes elaborately about the entire network of these non-state actors. Pakistan has created something like a very complex machinery of terror funding. They created multiple sources of terror funding and the idea behind was that if one source of funding is crushed, then they can activate the other source of funding. And if there is shortage of funds from one source of one source, then they can regulate other, they can start activate other sources. In this context, one of the major source of generating funds was zakat donations from Pakistan. And in this context, I would like to particularly emphasize how lashkar e taiba collects funds from Pakistan and how jaish e mohammed collects funds from Pakistan. The book Terror Financing in Kashmir talks about hawala and drug dealers working in countries like the UAE and how the Islamic tax zakat and donations are being raised by terror groups in Pakistan. Interestingly, even the underground workers, members of separatist groups, former militants, weapon dealers, terror financing coordinators and hawala operators were interviewed for details on terror financing. Abhinav in his book explains how Islamic charities by jihadi organizations like Lashkar-e Taiba and Jaish-e Muhammad in Pakistan play a central role in terror financing. Lashkar-e Taiba has a, a very significant and a very robust network of collecting zakat donations from Pakistan and particularly on various festivals uh, like Eid and other festivals, they collect these do donations. And they all, that people also donate the hides, the animal skins of the animals which are slaughtered on these festivals uh, to Lashkar-e Taiba. And you know, the amount which they generate is terrific, it's significant, huge, in, in millions of dollars. I'm really bad with numbers, I'm forgetting the numbers, but for that you can refer to my book, Terror Financing in Kashmir, which has been released. But uh, you'll find that the, these amounts are terrific, in millions of uh, you know, dollars, you know, the amount of money which they raise from these donations. Likewise, jaish e mohammed has excellent network of madrasas and seminaries in South Kashmir and they organize jalsas, the processions where people make huge donations to their foundations, their seminaries, their madrasas and all this amount, you know, they, it constitute a big fund, you know, big money which ultimately goes into terror funding and orchestrating terrorist operations and radicalizing, radicalization missions in India and other parts of the world. Pakistan wants to ensure the unending engagement of Indian security forces in Kashmir. For Pakistan, Kashmir constitutes an excellent outlet for the frustration at home. It is using the Kashmir issue as an instrument for the mobilization of the masses, as well as gaining the support of the Islamist parties. However, Indian security forces are committed to defeating the intentions of the adversary and their efforts are providing enough space to carry on development activities in the Union Territory.
And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.